Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am Dr. Yawazuma from Foundation Tuai. And today I'm here to um, for the course on the uh, renewable energy, especially uh, the solar thermal course. This course is delivered by me and the uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ramde from Energy Center. So today I am going to introduce the chapter five of this course, meaning concentrating solar power technology. You have already seen in the previous chapters the transformation of or the conversion of solar energy uh, into uh, thermal radiation but low temperature one. If we consider the picture here, we have the solar energy and we have two main ways of conversion of this, sol of this solar energy actually. The first well-known one is photovoltaic conversion. This one, uh, we have solar cells that will directly convert solar radiation into electricity. The second way we have is the thermal conversion of solar radiation. We have two types of this thermal uh, uh, conversion actually. We have the technologies without concentration, uh, meaning uh, flat plate collectors. You have seen evacuate tube uh, 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 collectors, etc., etc. And this kind of technology are used to produce, for example, Heat, uh, heat, uh, to heat water with heat, and so sanitary, sanitary hot water, or uh, to to cool, uh, um, to cool, uh, to, to make uh, to cool the product. I mean, to cool area or etc. Uh, uh, to 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 produce or to heat uh, area that need to be heated, etc. etc. We have several application of that. It can, we can even produce electricity uh, with this uh, concentration, uh, uh, without co uh, technology without concentration uh, of, uh, of the, uh, uh, this thermal way uh, of conversion. But today I would like to speak about the second way in thermal conversion actually of solar energy. This second aspect of thermal conversion of solar radiation is technologies with concentration. These are solar power plants called CSP, concentration solar power, and we have also solar furnaces. The main applications of this transformation of solar irradiation are electricity production, hydrogen production, materials, we have some specific materials uh, that are uh, manufactured using uh, solar furnaces, actually cogeneration, etc., etc. So, what is CSP? In fact, CSP is any technology that could lead to solar radiation conversion into heat at higher temperatures, ranging from 250 degrees Celsius to 2000 degrees Celsius, actually. And then, the heat is 
at his turn converted uh, into mechanical or electrical energy by the means of a thermodynamic cycle coupled to uh, an electricity generator. So, to be more precise, you have this uh, um, uh, uh, diagram here. Uh, uh, you have the solar, the direct radiation here. And this direct radiation arrive at the concentrator level. This concentrator will concentrate the rays of solar onto a receiver. And the receiver actually contains an absorber that will uh, collect the heat from solar radiation and this heat will be uh, supplied to a thermodynamic cycle. And within this thermodynamic cycle, you have a turbine. This turbine will produce, let's say, uh, uh, mechanical energy, mechanical power that will um, uh, that will help uh, producing electricity because that will enable to run an electricity generator. So basically, this is the principle of CSP. Um, before going on, let me give you uh, some um, main differences between CSP and solar photovoltaic action. As you can see here, only the direct component of solar irradiation is used for CSP application. Diffuse or reflected components are not used, are not useful here. But if we consider the uh, solar photovoltaic, actually, we have uh, the use of the global solar rad uh, irradiation action. So one bigger difference is the uh, component needed to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, um, to supply to the, uh, let's say, to the system. Another main difference is the thermal power. Here, with this thermal power, we have several applications. We can either produce heat or cold at this level, or we can use this heat into a thermodynamic cycle for electricity generation to steam turbine or gas turbine or combined cycle of uh, uh, etc to, to have uh, uh, a good efficiency of your electrical block action. So that the, the, the main advantage here is, is the storage of this thermal power. We can store this thermal power and when we have to satisfy, for example, a peak during the night, so we can store it and release the heat for uh, uh, the demand of the night, for example. Uh, uh, in contrary, photovoltaics are suitable uh, for the daily demand. Or uh, if you have to satisfy the night demand, so you need to store in batteries. And the storage of electricity in batteries is more costing than doing the storage of thermal power at. We have a chapter on this storage and hybrid system, and we come back to this later. So, we have four types of CSP at. The first one is called parabolic trough. As you can see in this slide, 
you have a semi parabola and in the line uh, in the line focal uh, 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 cos here you have a linear focal focal uh, 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 we have the receiver this receiver actually will uh, uh, receive um, the radiation from the concentrator and will hit a fluid, a thermal fluid, which is flowing through it, and this heat will be collected um, to be supplied. Uh, will be collected and supplied to to a thermodynamic side at. The second type of CSV is linear Fresnel. The linear Fresnel is almost the same thing like the parabolic trough. The difference here is you have a um, plane mirror that are disposed in such a way to form a semi-parabola. So that's the main difference. Uh, the rest is the same thing. We have still a linear focal. Uh, 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 it's not a focal point here, but the focal is linear. And we have the, the receiver uh, uh, along with uh, this uh, li uh, linear uh, focus uh, of uh, the system. The third type of CSP is the central tower. So the central tower, you have a tower. At the top of this tower, we have the receiver. And at the ground, we have what we call heliostat. Heliostat actually are also mirrors. And these mirrors will reflect the uh, solar irradiation uh, at the top of the uh, tower, uh, mainly on the, uh, on the uh, receiver uh, level. And uh, the receiver contains uh, the uh, absorber that will collect the heat from solar radiation and will extend this heat with a thermal fluid which will be used to power a thermodynamic cycle uh, and at the end we'll have electricity production. The last type of CSP is parabolic dish. The parabolic dish actually, it is a parabola that will concentrate his, um, uh, that will ref, uh, yes, concentrate the solar radiation at its focal point. And at the focal point, we have the a receiver. Still, it's still the same thing like the, uh, the, the, the central tower. The difference here, we have most of the time a selling engine and this engine will convert directly um, the heat into electricity production. So you can't store here the thermal energy uh, like we have seen it for the three other types of CSP. Now, Let's take one by one each type of CSP and to see things uh, more in details. Let's start with the parabolic trough. The parabolic trough, here we have a picture of uh, Almeria plant. You can see the semi parabola I was talking about and the receiver which is at the uh, the focal line of this semi-parabola actually and this will co receive the concentrated uh, radiation uh, uh, from, from this semi-parabola. Uh, in more detail, for example, you have here uh, on this picture, you have the thermal loop here and here you have the thermodynamic uh, uh, thermodynamics uh, cycle. So here you have like the, therm the thermal fluid here is 
oil, synthetic oil. This oil will collect heat at the level of the solar field, or, or let's say at the parabolic trough uh, level. And uh, he will exchange through the several exchanges we have here uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, the fluid here, the working fluid, which is, which is here a vapor, and uh, this uh, 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 steam generated will be expanded uh, uh, throughout a, a steam turbine, and the steam turbine will power uh, uh, mechanically uh, 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 electric electricity generator that will generate electricity uh, uh, for end use. So, for this type of parabolic trough, for example, you need to cool the condenser. So this is very important. Um, uh, if you want to choose the technology, you have to address all the constraints uh, uh, linked to the choice you are, you are making. Uh, so uh, have in mind that most of areas uh, suitable for this kind of technology are semi-arid areas most of the time. So uh, water uh, use actually is a big issue. Uh, so you have to uh, address this concern when you are selecting the technology. Um, one one other type, type of uh, parabolic trough is um, the one who is using water as the thermal fluid and the working fluid actually. So you have the first, uh, let's say, solar collector, the parabolic trough here, that will heat the water. And this water will be uh, separate, separated here. We have the steam generated here that will be superheated and that will go to the turbine, etc. like the same thing uh, as what we have already seen. So, basically, is how parabolic trough uh, system uh, works. So, uh, the central tower actually we have three main uh, uh, types of central tower. We have one that uses uses molten salt as um, as the thermal fluid. So here you have the heliostat. You have the receiver here, and the molten uh, salt will collect heat from the absorber here. And you have two storage tank. This one is for the cold salt, and this one is for the heat salt. And that will store will store uh, heat and will be released at the the uh, at a given moment, uh, the uh, operator wanted, uh, wants actually to, to, to for, for his uh, energy supply, uh, uh, for example. So it's still the same thing. Uh, the heat collected here will enable to power uh, this uh, thermodynamic side, etc. You can have gas turbine. Or steam turbine, etc. And instead of having a uh, molten salt, we have also the steam uh, central tower uh, using uh, hot uh, uh, the water here that will be heated, and the vapor will be separated. We have here uh, a steam uh, uh, storage tank, and this also will be used for. Uh, uh, to, to will be used and uh, it will be expanded uh, uh, into uh, a turbine for electricity generation. Uh, either you can use air as uh, the thermal fluid 
uh, uh, of your your system? Um, the parable dish, as I already said, it is the parabola that will concentrate the solar radiation at its focal point. And at its focal point, we have a sterling engine. And this engine needs actually heat uh, to, be, to be run. And uh, this will uh, directly generate electricity. So, what are the differences between the four types of CSP? Here you have a table that summarizes um, the, the, the difference uh, uh, between these four uh, technologies. For example, I'll prove some uh, a specific point. The, the technology maturity, you can see that the parabolic trough, it is the more matured technology item because it is commercially in operation. Uh, either in California or even in Spain, actually. Uh, most of the Fresen, Fresnel uh, uh, techno, uh, um, the system are at the pilot level. Uh, recently, uh, in Spain, we have one commercial uh, um, plant uh, of uh, one megawatt uh, electric. Okay, and we have also some central uh, uh, tower which are in operation. The parabolic, uh, the dish parabolic also, uh, many of them are at the pilot level. Okay, so here you can see the, the uh, range of uh, the power installed today. And we have also the thermal fruit and their uh, temperatures. Uh, we'll talk in chapter six about the, the storage, and here you have several materials that are used uh, for thermal energy storage uh, in, this, in these technologies. And also the thermodynamic cycle used uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, these technologies for each uh, as, uh, CSP is listed here. For example, for Fresnel and Power Trap, most of the time we are using ranking side, but for Central Tower, we have choice between a ranking uh, uh, side or Brighton or combined side. And uh, mainly for parabolic dish, we have sterling uh, engine. We have many advantages and disadvantages uh, considering each technology. Let me take uh, uh, two of them and compare the advantages and disadvantages. If we take parabolic trap, for example, you can see that this technology is industrial, industrially uh, 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 it is uh, a, a, a power plant which is uh, industrially uh, commercialized actually uh, with low concentration. Uh, this technology is very simple uh, comparing to the uh, central tower which, which has a higher concentration but uh, this technology is actually more complex than the parabolic trough. Uh, the, as I said, we have uh, uh, average efficiency here. But here, uh, we have complex receiver and complex system, you see. And also, if we compare uh, uh, this central tower to the parabolic disk, you can see that this is causing uh, 
more than the central uh, uh, tower actually, and it's not reliable. Okay, so it's some uh, specific point of the advantages and disadvantages of uh, these CSP technologies. So we put here roughly some data about the um, mean efficiency, annual mean efficiency of these technologies, the investment cost, the solar field cost, but these are not accurate data. These are a, 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 a raw estimation of the cost of this uh, technology at um, We don't uh, guide people to use this data for a true design of CSP. If we want to design a CSP, so you need to go and look for uh, a, a specification of each equipment and to come with uh, invoice uh, that will help you um, uh, doing well your, your economical analysis. But this data you have here could guide you having an idea uh, when there is uh, 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 the, uh, when there is uh, a way to select one technology uh, uh, or the the, 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 uh, the or the other. Uh, so it's not to make a precise design of uh, CSP technology at. In this diagram, I would like here to show the installed capacity of CSP around the world. You can see that there is a, a big uh, uh, evolution, uh, let's say uh, it, there, there is a, an increase of uh, installed capacity since 2004 to now. You can see that in 2004, we were almost around 300 megawatts. But today, we are talking about 2.4 gigawatts. So this is good news, actually, meaning that more and more CSP, CSP plants are installed, are being installed throughout, throughout the world. At and here, uh, the uh, site where we have a uh, CHP ongoing project. You can see that we have uh, some in uh, USA, mainly in California. Uh, we have some in Spain. Some of them are in North Africa, mainly Algeria, Morocco, and Egypt. And we have some going on in uh, South Africa and uh, here Saudi Arabia and Asia, uh, mainly in, in China and Australia. So um, you can see that there is nothing going on actually in sub-Saharan countries. So something must be done in, in this way. <clears throat> here is uh, a map of annual average daily of direct normal radiation for West Africa. This is uh, one of our research uh, results actually, but still it is questionable because the data we have used are satellite data and which are not necessarily uh, the, uh, are not necessarily accurate data. So, it's just to show roughly uh, areas in Sahelian, uh, in Sahelian region which are, are more suitable for uh, uh, solar, CIS, uh, for concentrating solar power actually in West Africa. And um, we also conducted a study that helped us uh, uh, evaluating the skilled manpower needed to uh, build a CSP 
a plant athlete. So here we have uh, uh, several the, the several for each component of this this technology athlete, we were able able to see which kind of engineers we need. For example, for solar concentrator, we need optical construction. So we need uh, optical engineers, for example, or optical uh, construction technician, etc. We need metal, me, metallic construction engineers, etc., etc. And if we take the receiver or the full circuit, you need, for example, a boiler manufacturing engineers, piping engineers, civil, civil engineers, etc., etc. Okay, and so if we take the thermal storage, we were able to uh, um, find the, the, the skilled manpower also uh, for this part. We need we still need uh, boiler manufacturing engineer, engineers, uh, civil engineers, piping engineers, uh, engineer in instrumentation. Etc. Etc. And technician also. And for the electrical block, we need electromechanical engineers and technicians, and also electrical engineers, etc. For the solar power operation, uh, from an administration point of view, we need plant manager, administrative staff, uh, etc. So all these are very important. When we want to design a system, when we want to um, uh, have these technologies uh, spread throughout throughout West Africa, we need clearly to see which skilled manpower do we need, okay? And how many do we need? We are able, but it's not in this study, but we are able to, to evaluate for a given power uh, electrical uh, uh, power um, uh, we need uh, uh, useful power we were, we were able to, to say that we need for example two electrical engineers or four uh, mechanical engineers etc etc it is very important uh, for uh, 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 decision makers I think they need all this to take the right decision about yeah, the adoption of these technologies. Now, there are some issues that uh, must be overcome to make sure that um, this technology will uh, or will be uh, uh, the, 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 this technology will sust will be sustainable uh, or will sustain in our area. First of all, the energy needs. The energy demand is very diversified and uh, is at different scales in our countries. We need to, to see the energy services we need in our countries to make sure that we are using the right technology to supply the demand. The solar field also is an issue. For example, in Sahelian areas, we have dust deposit, and to clean these uh, 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 mirrors, we need maybe water. If you, we are considering, uh, let's say, 20 hectares, so you need water to clean 20 hectares. The problem is, in this region, we have water scarcity. so. Uh, uh, the, the question is, is, is it good to use water or, for example, compressed air? Uh, and we can address which frequency is good, is, is good for the, the, the whole efficiency of your, your system. Uh, the manpower also in this way. I think all these are things to be addressed. And the investment of the, uh, the, for the solar fuel the 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 um let's say the, the repartition of uh, the the heliostat for example uh you have to think about the 
the uh, optimized way uh, to design this solar field, etc., etc. The problem linked to the land cover, uh, etc., are also uh, uh, big issues to be overcome. At the receivers as well, uh, the uh, the materials that uh, uh, will be used for the absorber, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, are part of issues that will be uh, that should be addressed. At the thermal fluids, the synthetic oil, uh, which we are, uh, which are used, for example, which is used, excuse me, for example, in most of the uh, parabolic trap system, are very inflammable and toxic. So, uh, from environment point of view, it's not a good choice. At all. So we have to address all this to see whether in our area or which kind of thermal fluid is very good for us. And from thermal storage point of view, which material that would be environmental friendly and could be could be available in our area could be uh, cheaper and uh, having high heat capacity and high conductivity at all this uh, we have to work and to come with uh, let's say optimized materials etc in our area we have sands we have rocks we have there are many materials here which are not yet experimented to store energy. So we need to, to work on all this. I already spoke about water consumption because in average we have, if you are using ranking system, I mean steam, steam turbine, uh, for one kilowatt hour electric, we need four liters of water. This is enough. Uh, is very, very much considering semi-arid area where uh, uh, people are suffering uh, 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 from uh, water scarcity, you know. So this is a big issue in the selecting, in the selection of CSP technology. Transmission and distribution of electricity is an issue because Many semi-arid areas are in lack of high voltage line uh, in Africa. At, if you consider uh, some areas in Niger, in Chad, in um, Mauritania or Mali, or Mali uh, uh, we don't have high voltage transmission line, but we have the, the direct, good direct uh, uh, irradiation there. So, uh, if you want to build a CSP plant in such region, so you need to consider the fact that there is no transmission line that could, uh, 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 let's say, uh, that could take the that could transport the electricity and distribute it. Uh, into the, uh, uh, let's say, into the uh, end use, I mean, uh, for people who, who are, uh, are in need. You know? So uh, this is also a point, a very important point in designing of CSP plant at. To finish, most of the time people want to uh, put PV system against CSP or CSP against PV. Uh, from my point of view, I think there's no way to put PV uh, or to say that PV is better than CSP or CSP is better than, C uh, than PV. I think the two technologies actually, they have their uh, weak points and their strong points. For example, if we consider CSP, they will take only direct irradiation of solar. 
So, if you are in the area, there is very important diffuse component of the radiation, you can't use CSP then. Uh, the efficiency will be very, very low. But PV, actually, whatever is diffuse or direct, you can use both of them. So, we can put PV system everywhere. Okay? And contrary, CSP could not be uh, used everywhere. And if you take PV, for example, it's mostly at end users, meaning that uh, uh, households could uh, use PV for their electricity need at least. But it is rare, but it is rare, let's say, uh, uh, CSP is mainly for the utilities. Okay? And uh, one weak point of photovoltaic actually is it is very variable. But the, the, the strong point of CSP, it is dispatchable and uh, because it, you can store it and can make backup, etc. You can store it at the uh, thermal form. Uh, it is easy and cheaper, uh, easier and cheaper uh, than storing electricity in batteries at, okay, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have uh, the 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 advantages of CSP also linked to the fact that uh, uh, that could help you uh, using uh, several applications. I mean, you can uh, use uh, the heat for hot water production for cooling system running and you can use uh, it, it uh, the heat also for uh, some material specific materials production even for hydrogen production okay and if you want to produce electricity you can also use it okay but with photovoltaic we can't um, produce anything uh, 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 than yeah, uh, but the electricity. Okay, so we can imagine that during the day we are using PV for electricity production and supply to the grid immediately. But at the same time, we are using CSP, uh, uh, but uh, not for electricity production. But for example, if you have hundred percent uh, of this uh, uh, energy collected from CSP, you can store it and use, for example, 20 to 30 per, uh, uh, percent of this for cooling, for heating, and the rest, the 70 percent could be used, for example, uh, in the night uh, for the peak demand, for example. Uh, we store it at uh, like a steam, for example, we, can, we know how to store the, the steam, and when we, 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 we read the hour of the peak demand, we just release this and we'll expand the, the, the steam uh, in a turbine and produce electricity we need. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this course is mainly to introduce uh, concentration solar power. Uh, throughout uh, some uh, mini project, we will uh, try to give you more details and how to design uh, these technologies. Uh, you have uh, some of the modeling, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, aspect of this uh, technology, mainly the uh, central receiver and the, uh, the cost material uh, you have actually on, online but we'll make some uh, mini projects that will help you uh, also having this uh, 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 competence actually. Um, also, uh, in the coming chapter, I mean chapter six, we'll see hybrid system uh, and also the uh, storage aspect of CSP technology. So thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye-bye.